Okay, uh, so good evening, everybody, and welcome to this session on uh, idiopathic toe walking. Now, toe walking is something that uh, we see a lot in the uh, pediatric OPD. Uh, so, uh, this becomes quite an important topic, both from the uh, uh, theory as well as from a very, very practical point of view. Okay, I hope my screen is visible and I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Okay, so uh, about toe walking. So what exactly is toe walking? So uh, as we all know that in the gait, we have a stance phase as well as a swing phase. Now, when we have the stance phase, the first thing that meets the ground is the heel. So we call that the heel strike. Now, toe walking is defined as a condition where the initial foot contact pattern in the stance phase is on the forefoot rather than the normal heel strike. So in a normal individual, what we would see is that the heel comes into contact first. Okay, so that's the heel strike. But in a patient who is suffering from toe walking, what we have is that the heel is off the ground and the forefoot four foot comes into contact with the ground initially. Okay. So there is no heel strike as such. So that is what idiopathic or toe walking is. Now, why do we call it idiopathic? Okay. So we call it idiopathic because we do not really find a reason for this. But are there reasons why a child can walk with on the toes without a heel strike? So for that, we initially need to evaluate every child who comes to the outpatient department with this complaint and find out whether there is any cause or not. In case that uh, there is no other organic cause for the toe walking, then it becomes a idiopathic toe walking. Whereas if we find out causes leading to this uh, clinical feature of toe walking, then we would call it an toe walking due to a condition. That could be congenital, it could be acquired, it could be neurologic, it could be neuromuscular. So, uh, one of the most uh, notorious, uh, not notorious, one of the most common uh, cause for toe walking abnormally seen in children would be a spastic, uh, spastic conditions like cerebral palsy. Whereas, uh, when we don't find any other organic causes where it's not congenital, doesn't look acquired, is it neurologic, then it is called a idiopathic toe walking. And in this idiopathic toe walking, it has been seen that a vast majority of children do suffer from some sort of a autistic spectrum disorder. Okay, so some form of autism, all the way from mild till a savior. Okay, so about 40 to 50 percent of the children with idiopathic toe walking do have some amount of uh, autism. But does autism cause toe walking? It is not a direct cause as such. That is why we still call it idiopathic toe walking. Now, irrespective of whether it's an idiopathic toe walking or toe walking due to any other reason, the treatment would be more or less the same. Okay. So, in the end, we come to the treatment. Okay. So, uh, what does uh, the natural history tell us? Okay. That about 5 to 25 percent of the children suffer from. Uh, idiopathic toe walking and this is all the children healthy unhealthy all of them okay out of which do we know how many cases resolved spontaneously so the only study which has been done on a large cohort which was done in sweden found out that out of a thousand five hundred odd children who were uh, examined or who were uh, who were present in the cohort only about 70 five children had toe walking or had ever complained of toe walking. Okay. This is at three years of age. When the same cohort was followed till five years of age, that almost reduced to less than 40%. So how many children were walking? So about 70% of 70 children were walking with uh, toe walking that reduced down to 30. And by the time they were eight years old, that reduced even further to about 25 
and then by the time they were 10 years of age hardly about 15 children did suffer from toe walking so out of 1500 15 children would be less than around 1% or even less than 1% who would be a persistent toe walk okay so does genetics play a role we have seen that a large majority of these children are uh, males so it is thought that it could be a autosomal recessive condition which is not uh, manifested in the uh, it is not manifested in the, sorry not uh, autosomal x linked uh, recessive condition which is not manifested in the uh, female population it is only popular it is only manifested in the male population and there has been a family history which is seen in uh, these patients so how do we diagnose okay so lack of heel strike during the stance phase will call it toe walking okay but the initial workup of the child should include a thorough history and a thorough physical examination looking at even the general development when the toe walking started whether it's progressing or not whether it's present at some parts of the day and it gets worse throughout as the child walks or is it worsening over time why are all of these important because all of these are causes or other reasons why a child could walk on his or her toes and these are all those other diagnoses which could lead to toe walking apart from idiopathic toe walking. Okay, so if we go through these one by one, the majority of these things are going to be cerebral palsy. Okay, so we have cerebral palsy there and for cerebral palsy, we can have a history of premature birth, delayed motor milestones and patients who are refractory to the treatment. Okay. Apart from this, we could have children who are come uh, children who are coming with uh, motor neuron, uh, sorry, uh, upper motor neuron uh, lesions, who could be having incontinence, leg pain, back pain, and a progressive sort of a toe walking. Okay, and this would be due to diastrometamilia, tethered cord syndrome as well. Okay, then. We have uh, children who can have conditions which progresses or worsens throughout the day. Okay, if it's worsening throughout the day, that means it is dopa responsive dystonia. Whereas if there is a variable toe walking, depending uh, with more commonly with barest foot posturing, then it is only a dystonic sort of uh, lesion which is leading to the toe walking. However, if there is any sensory processing disorder or autism spectrum disorder, we would call it only an idiopathic toe. Okay. So these are a few conditions. Apart from that, some things that we should not forget is that even a neuromuscular disorder like a Duchenne's can lead to toe walking. Okay. Coming to the physical finding, if there is a dorsal midline skin incision, that means either a tethered cord or diastrometamilia have been treated. If there is calf hypertrophy, we are looking at a Duchenne's muscular dystrophy or any other sort of muscular dystrophy. If we are looking at upper motor neuron findings, spasticity, hyperreflexia, Babinski sign, or patients having uh, unilateral conditions, or patients having lower motor neuron lesions such as cavus, muscular atrophy, weakness, sensory loss, or hyporeflexia, then we are looking at a spinal cause. Okay, so we can have either a lower motor neuron lesion or an upper motor neuron lesion, depending on where which part of the neurologic system is involved. Okay, of course, apart from that, we can have we can make use of the popliteal angle, which will differentiate it between cerebral palsy and a idiopathic toe walking because the popliteal angle will be reduced in children with cerebral pulse. Okay. So after we have excluded all of these, we can then make a diagnosis of idiopathic toe because this happens to be a diagnosis of 
exclusion. Okay. Now, apart from the history and physical examination, there are a few other things that could help us uh, uh, help us differentiate or help us pinpoint what uh, we are looking at. So, when these children with idiopathic toe walking, uh, a few things that I have missed out, sorry, is that at what age do they present to you? They present to you at about or after about 18 months of age because the parents really wait out for the the child generally starts walking by 10, 10 months of age and uh, generally if they are having some sort of autism spectrum disorder or they are having uh, 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 spastic uh, conditions such as cerebral palsy they would walk generally a little later by about 12 to 18 months of age and by the time they present to you they are more than 18 months of age so if they present to you if they present to you by 18 months to about three years. Okay. So these are called toe walkers. Okay. However, any child who presents more than five years of age would then be called an idiopathic toe walker who is persistent. Persistent idiopathic toe walker who is walking on his or her toes even after the age of five years okay so coming to quantitative gait analysis